Hyundai have just announced the changes in specification for the 2023 model of the Ionic 5, so I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you how long it might take to get one, if you order one, in the UK at least. And I'm also going to tell you about some sneaky changes to the safety systems in the 2022.5 model year version of the Ionic 5 that you may have actually ordered, perhaps without even knowing about it. As you will probably know, there are component issues all around the world. Car manufacturers are really struggling to get some essential parts. And in the Ionic 5's case, Hyundai have struggled to get the, I believe it's the side sensors. And the side sensors, they are quite useful for doing certain things in terms of safety. So these have been changed. So if you, if you order, or if you have ordered, an, I an Ionic 5, ask your dealer which model year you're getting. They've probably told you anyway, it'll, I think it'll be on the order, but um, still it's worth knowing about these differences. You could argue they're safety changes, or you could also say, well, it's just driver assistance stuff. Either way, these changes don't impact the safety rating like NCAP and the insurance group isn't changed by this. So don't worry about any of that. And to be honest, they're small things and um, I, it's not like I would cancel my order because of these changes, but I'll tell you what they are anyway. First thing is forward collision assist. And um, what would happen, so what happens in my Ionic 5, so in the 2022 model year Ionic 5, if you turn, the Ionic 5 detects oncoming vehicles and reacts if the driver attempts to turn across their path. And also crossing, the Ionic 5 can detect and react to vehicles approaching from the side, which will cross paths with the direction of travel. And that's shown in a little diagram there. Um, so the crossing bit has been removed. Um, so you've just got the turning facility. Most people are not going to actually notice this, you know. Um, so it's but it's just good to be aware of it. And uh, the other thing is the highway drive assist. This is something that actually you're more likely to notice if you've driven the previous spec. Previously it was level two, highway drive assist level two, and now it's level one point five. So um, you can see on screen the kind of things that. Uh, that it did have this number this hda2 what it did have lane change assist lane edge driving a cut in response lane change assist i'll read this quickly uh, once turn signal is activated ionic 5 will change lanes when safe to do so um i don't actually like that very much anyway but um my friend Maz, when he was driving the car, absolutely adored it. So uh, anyway, it's um, it's kind of cool. You push the indicator up and it will change your lanes. Um, and the other thing here is lane edge driving. When a vehicle in the next lane drifts too close, Ionic 5 moves to the opposite edge of the lane to keep a safe distance. And cut in response. At low speeds, Ionic 5 detects other cars cutting in and will automatically decelerate to regain the desired following distance. All of that is gone um, now in this level 1.5. And it, uh, so it just says on these notes here, on the motorway, smart cruise control combines with lane follow assist to keep the vehicle in lane and adjust speed to maintain a distance from the car in front, includes stop and go functionality. So that's pretty much what I would expect and enjoy already anyway. So these changes wouldn't even affect me. If I was getting a new Ionic 5, I wouldn't care about it. But it's good to know these things. So um, just be aware, if you've got an order in, just check what model year it is, because um, if it's 20... 2.5 um 2022.5 then you will be missing these things and i've been trying to work out if there's anything else that is also missing um, um i did uh, my friend maz thought the mood lighting might not be in the in the 22.5 one but i, I don't know about that because i'd also heard that that was like a software update so i'm not sure if you know then do let me know but um the one other big thing is that if you're ordering an Ionic 5, again, this is UK specific, really. If you're ordering one at the moment, you might not be able to order an all-wheel drive version. Again, because of component issues. So that's quite a big one, really, because uh, the one I have uh, is all-wheel drive, and it's been brilliant in winter. Um, I've, I've just not... I mean, I used to have an, an e-Nero, which was front-wheel drive. This is generally rear-wheel drive, actually, most of the time, but the, it, it goes to all-wheel drive if it needs it. And I was not slipping at all. Uh, we got you know, slippery leaves all over the place. So that's brilliant. All-wheel drive, I love it. And, um, and so, no, you can't have that at the moment. OK, so let's move on to the 2023 model year. So this is all good stuff, I think. So the first big thing is the battery. The battery has gone up in size from 72.6 kilowatt hours to 77.4 kilowatt hours. Doesn't sound like a massive increase, but you're probably going to get an extra 30 miles of range. 
average 30 miles um, out of that. So that's the same battery that you get in the Kia EV6. And the Ionic 5 in America has the same battery as well. So if you're in America and watching this and you've got an Ionic 5, then you're probably saying, hey man, I've already got the bigger battery, you know, what are you talking about? So, um, sorry, sorry, awful, awful accent. Um, so that's, so you get a bigger battery, so that's, that's great. There's now an option for a digital rear view mirror. It's uh, solving a problem that shouldn't exist in the first place. But the at the moment, you don't have a rear wiper. I say at the moment, you probably never will in Ionic 5. You don't have a rear wiper. If the back bit gets all muddy and grimy, as mine is at the moment, then you can't do much about it other than going out there and washing it. So a rear view mirror that's digital means that with a camera over there, it's hopefully less likely to get grubby and dirty and you should get improved visibility, depending on how good the camera is. And they're going to put the camera um, under the spoiler. Now, I think it's probably still going to get a little bit grubby, isn't it? So, but perhaps, perhaps still better than that, that kind of awful kind of rear view I've got at the moment. I mean, it, it really is grubby. Um, in the iPace, I believe there's an option for this and they put it in the shark fin. Um, I would have said that's probably a better position for it because that's even higher up and less likely to get grubby. But anyway, they're putting it in the spoiler. So that's going to be an option. I don't know how much this is going to cost. Also digital side mirrors, which they already have actually in um, Korea. And um, click the link to see a video that someone else has done about that. Now, I think they look awful, um, but I've not used them, so I don't know. You know, um, I know the Audi e-tron has the option of digital side mirrors and people complain about those. The Honda e has them, but the Honda e does it in a really good way because the digital camera, the, um, the display is right next to where they would be, where the mirrors would be. So it kind of looks good. In this, it looks like it's a bit lower down. Check the video um, and, and let me know what you think. But um, again, I kind of just worry that if someone crashes into that, then it's gonna cost even more to replace than a, than a side mirror already would. But um, apparently it's better for aerodynamics. So perhaps you get a little increase of range. Smart frequency dampers, uh, that changes the stiffness um, on the rear axle, this the rear axle suspension, depending on driving conditions. I'm not going to pretend to know anything about that at all, but hey, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously an upgrade, isn't it? So that's great. So the other thing then is, and this is quite a big one, is a battery heater, or sorry, it's got a battery heater, battery preconditioning. I did a video about this, have a look at that. Um, it shows that the Ionic 5, this super amazing car that charges like lightning, will only charge like lightning in just the right conditions and the battery has to be warm enough to do it. So a lot of people have been complaining getting them over winter, well the battery is charging really slowly. So this will sort that out. When you navigate to a, a charger using the built-in navigation, it will preheat the battery. So when you get to the charger, it should be faster charging. So that's fantastic. Well, that's going to be an option apparently. I don't know what they mean by option, because this, in theory, is something that could be just enabled by software if you have a heat pump. So perhaps the option is having a heat pump. If so, I would recommend you option a heat pump, um, which which might, I forget now with the specifications, it might only be available in the Ultimate, not the Premium, I can't remember now, but it's called the Eco Pack anyway. So... Um, so it's going to have battery conditioning. Now, I, what I really hope, and they should be doing it, I hope it's going to be a software update for older Ionic 5s that have the heat pump. It really should do, because as I've moaned about before, they um, they advertise this super quick 18 minutes to 80% charging speed, but it's not much good if you don't get that speed 99% of the time, is it? If if the uh, Especially if you're in a cold climate. Um, I've heard some... Some of these rumours in about the Sweden and uh, Denmark Ionic 5s, they will have soft touch materials and LED interior lights in all models, not just the higher trims, more leather in the, in the upholstery in the models that have part leather, part wool. I don't know whether the UK are going to get that. Um, what I do know is that there's a €2,100 Euro price increase. So assuming we get the same price increase, and we will get certainly a price increase, if it's the same, then with today's rates that's about 1770 but they'll probably round it up to 2000 won't they so it could be that it, the model goes up by 2000 pounds at least the higher spec versions of it anyway i mean talking about that i mean in again i believe looking at all these rumors it sounds like 
in Sweden and Denmark, the battery heater and heat pump, um, that might go into the base model, which they really should do here, but I don't think they're going to. Um, and also front parking sensors and the wireless phone charger, the base model will now get in those countries. Again, that's what I've heard anyway. The rumours might be wrong. So what I don't know about this uh, 2023 model year spec is I'm not sure whether they're going to reintroduce those safety or uh, those kind of driver assistance things that I spoke about earlier. I don't know whether that's going to be come back in the 2023. I also don't know whether you'll be able to order an all-wheel drive version. I'm sure you will be able to. Um, but uh, you can order it uh, April. Orders will open in April. They're going to start making them in July, and if you order it, if, in fact, if you order any Ionic 5, you're looking at late 2022 to early 2023 delivery, which is mad, isn't it? Um, but uh, it's still arguably still better than Volkswagen. If you order a, Vol order a Volkswagen at the moment, you're still you're looking at about a year lead time. Madness. Uh, it's all because of this component shortage. Um, Teslas don't have the same issue, by the way, because um, uh, they're a bit more vertically integrated. I think the term is so it means that Tesla control a lot of a lot more of the components, and um, it means they're not really affected by these kind of shortages. So, uh, if you really want an electric car, and all the lead times are terrible, then the chances are you might be able to get a Tesla, although they're sold out for months as well. So, anyway. Uh, that's a whole other issue and I might do another video about that. So I think that's everything. So the big question is, would you still order an Ionic 5 um, now, even if it takes ages? I would say yes, because it's a great car. I love mine. The Certainly the, the, the camera um, on the rear view mirror, that's going to solve a big issue about this car, that driving along the rear view is not good, um, if that's all mucky. Um, I wish they put, a, I do wish they just put a wiper in, it would have been so much easier, wouldn't it? They could have hidden it under the spoiler like you get in uh, Range Rovers. Anyway, um, so they could have done that, but they didn't. So this camera kind of solves that issue, I suppose. Um, although I don't like the reliance on more tech, because it's just more stuff that can go wrong. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I think overall that's quite a solid, um, a solid upgrade. What I do wish they would add, and maybe they will, I don't know. I wish they would have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. A bit crazy that my old Fiat 500e had that and this doesn't. Um, I wish they would give us a sunroof in the UK because we can't option a sunroof. I mean, we do get the sun occasionally. It would be nice to see it occasionally. Um, so that's a shame. Also, USB-C ports. I wish they would just stick in a couple. I appreciate most people still have USB-A, but USB-C would be nice. Um, the Kia EV6 has it, so that would have been good. Um, and will we see proper over-the-air updates? Who knows? It's possibly. Possibly. Uh, it sounds like it might be coming. So that would be great as well. So I think that's it for this video. If you have any questions, do let me know. And if you're a Hyundai dealer and you have any more insider information, then please let me know. I'll buy you a drink. Um, and I think that's probably it for now. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Please press subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back really soon. Thank you very much. Bye for now.